Well, thank you for um, tuning in with us this afternoon. Um, we're calling this a pastor's porch. We don't really have a better name for that, but we're sitting on my porch, and this yeah. is a time that we we kind of come together. This is Molly Rambert. He's a pastor at Halls Grove, yeah. and um, he came from Pleasant Grove, or we went to church together for a time, and uh, when the Lord called him into ministry, he went, and he's pastor in there. Um, we want to use this time as a as a, mm. a way to bring other churches together, other pastors together. Uh, we're shut down, but this is something we can do. We, we pastor different churches, but we don't get to hang out as much as we used to. So today I've invited him over, and uh, Molly, I'm glad you're here. And um, you just want to say a word, and then we'll kind of get into what we're doing? I'd like to say uh, good evening to everyone as well. Thank you for having us. Uh, having me over today, Chris, and uh, just feel right at home hanging out on the porch. Yeah, he uh, yeah. he said there was one requirement. He said, <laughs> he said I got to have coffee. I said, well, I got coffee. <laughs> and uh, so I made sure the coffee pot was ready. And when he got here, he got him some coffee, and he's ready to go now. But uh, but uh, he's, like I said, he's the pastor. It's in, is that in Dewey Rose? Or is that it's in Dewey Rose. Dewey Rose, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, uh, not only is Molly a great friend, but Molly's also a uh, fellow pastor and uh the, when, when, when me and Molly were kind of talking about this day, we, we come up with this thought. You know, he asked, he said, what are we going to talk about? Well, you may or may not know Molly kind of went through a, a kind of a tragedy in his life. How long has that been? Mm, back in October. October, mm -hmm. so about six, six months. months. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. that's what I kind of thought. I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes right along with the scripture we want to share. Uh, and if you have a Bible or you want to remember this, it'll be on the screen, but you might want to uh, tune in with your phone or whatever. It's just a, it's just a verse. And then I'm just going to ask Molly some questions. And then... Uh, I've asked Molly if he would share his story uh, about uh, the accident that he had. The Bible says in James chapter 1, uh, verses 2 through 4, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And um, I just wanted to... I'm going to let Molly share the whole story, but I, I want to ask him a couple of questions about that. Molly, sure. I, I have a question, whether it's the accident or whatever. How do you count it all joys when you fall into various trials? How do you do that? Ooh, it's kind of a loaded question, I guess we can say, Chris. Um, when I think of that, I, I tell you for, for, you know, in my walk with Christ, I'll tell you that it's something that I think uh, we definitely have to learn to do. Um, because that kind of contradicts the whole deal. Um, I, I tell a lot of people that was a generation where preachers that I think came along that kind of sold salvation, kind of like used car salesmen. Yeah. Like you come to Jesus and everything will be okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I bought into that and I came to Jesus and I guess uh, um, and everything has been okay, but <laughs> nobody warned me about the headaches or the bumps in the road or the, the bumps and bruises in life. And when the trials came up, I struggled for a while, and um, I didn't understand that. And um, But now, you know, we've, we've been walking with the Lord um, over 20-something 20, 20 years, and um, we're, we're still learning. And um, But it was something I definitely had to, to learn. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and it goes to that second verse, uh, verse 3, mm -hmm. the second verse in our text, and it says, uh, it, it says, um, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Mm. I don't think any of us like to be tested, no. especially our faith. What do you think that means? Uh, I kind of got a thought, but what do you think, what, what is it like to have your faith tested? Mm. Once again, and that's, like I said, it's not a comfortable thing, but to kind of tie in to kind of close out on what I was saying with your first question, uh, Pastor Chris, is that, um, but it's so necessary. It's so necessary. Now, as I sit here, you know, when I came to Jesus, I was, it was in my late teens, um, around 18 years old. And now at 41, you know, and uh, I've been married over 20 years. So we have four children. You know, now life has happened and it is still happening. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and I understand now that it was so necessary. Yeah. Every headache, every bump, every bruise, it was necessary. And, and, and um, you know, a lot of my earlier trials, walking with Jesus, they prepared me for things later in life. Mm -hmm. I tell my kids now. Every tough coach you have, every tough administrator or, or teacher, you know, deal with that. Hang in there. Yeah. Don't quit. It's preparing you for something later. Mm. Um, we don't advocate quitting at the Rambles house. If my <laughs> wife was here, she'll give you a big old amen <laughs> on that. But um, you hang in there, and it's preparing. When I hear testing, it's not for my failure, mm. but it's, a, it's for my later successes in life. 
I remember mm -hmm. when Russ was in college playing ball, and he would call me sometimes, and he would be so frustrated because he was saying, man, this coach is wearing my name out, and he's all mm -hmm. over me on the field. And I said, son, he knows who you are. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he's taken that and really produced a great work ethic. But um, verse 4 says, and it says, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing. And a lot mm. of people think that word perfect means like perfection, but it, what it really means is complete. Completion, amen. And what I have seen in Russ's life, and even Leslie's life, she just moved mm. out. Uh, it's only about a mile down the road, so she can get her <laughs> supper, you know. And, uh, She's smart. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. And uh, in fact, mm. we've eaten supper about every night together, you know. <laughs> and, um, but one of the things that I've learned is that they've taken that work ethic from ball or school or your degree and they're taking it into the workplace mm. and it's they've learned how to deal with some adversity mm. so what we're what we're seeing i know you've seen it with your daughters is yeah uh god is completing that work that he started in them. that's good and but good. but i think i think it's uh patience have its perfect work nobody likes to be patient we want it now we live in a society where mm. i touch that button and i'm gonna get what i want yeah, we, yeah. You know, we're calling at&t if we don't get the right wi-fi speed yeah. or whatever yeah. you know but uh bottom line is when I was uh, working on a sermon today is uh, God wants us to learn to wait on him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, um, Oh man. And so, Chris, can I, I want to, sure, add, I want to add this. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about when you were speaking about Leslie, um, her being right there at the same age as my oldest daughter, Jemiah. I thought about when we moved into a bigger house and, um, God led me, um, I wasn't led to allow them to divide rooms mm -hmm. for a while. And I wanted them to, because they wouldn't get along and this and that, this and that. And it would have been convenient to just, you know, you get this room and you go over here, you know, this side of the house. But for a season, I, you know, allowed them to still share rooms. And that was later prepare, per, per, preparing them for college. Mm. Mm. When they would, you know, and, and, and even something that simple, you know, it was preparing them. Now, they didn't like it and they didn't understand it. There's a lot of things in my life I didn't like, wasn't convenient, didn't understand. I like to sit here and tell you now that every trial or every test me and tap went through, I clicked my heels and clapped and celebrated. Oh, yes, thank you, Jesus, another trial. But <laughs> no, that's not practical. Um, and still now, and still now today, we still go through things. And, and, um, and so, but I know they are for, you know, latest successes in life. Yeah, and... Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know who said this first, but I've heard it from several preachers that said a faith that can't be tested can't be trusted. Amen. And uh, I think Amen. testing of our faith does produce uh, perfection in our life. As I said, completeness. And we have to go through some things in order mm -hmm. to be that complete person God wants to be. I know that you've already lived this once. I know you've already been through this tragedy once. Mm -hmm. And I know many people know the story. So I don't want the expanded version. Give us a, give us a short version of what happened to you in October with the accident, and in, in that, you just feel free to share, but uh, in that, um, why don't you just kind of tell us what God, what God did or mm -hmm. what God told you, spoke to you during that time? Well, Chris, um, I tell you, that's going to be the acts of Baptist pastor on a back porch with good coffee to shorten it up. That's the equivalent <laughs> of our Lord and Savior. We only have on so much tape, you understand. <laughs> all right, y'all get a y'all get a dose of this. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. equivalent of Jesus walking on water. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tip to walk on water. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But, uh, you know, um, um, back on October the 14th of 2019, for those that don't know, I was in an accident. And I want to back up a little bit. The day before that, um, you know, and I think it's necessary for me to tell this part of the story. Um, one of the best days I've had in ministry, in ministry, mm -hmm. you know, you have those days and um, I enjoy sharing the word, but I was able to not only share the word in an um, anniversary celebration for a pastor brother of mine, but um, on that day, later that evening, as the sun set, we uh, renewed, mm -hmm. uh, he and his wife, um, their vows that day. Um, so it was a beautiful service. We got home, you know, my wife and I, we high-fived, and, and it was just a sweet day at the Rambert House. And the next day, uh, the kids were out of school, and I was out of work on that day. Um, and so at the time, my girls were off in school, Tab goes off to work. So the boys and I were at the house, the twins. And uh, we were at the house, and once again, we were still high from the day before. Mm. We were there, man, just a uh, just sweet day. I cracked the door open, and um, it was a fall, so I don't think I heard many birds, but I heard somebody out there singing. <laughs> you know, but um, just a sweet day, to say the least. 
and um, we're cooking at the house, and um, I got uh, laundry going. I'm making mama happy. <laughs> the boys wanted snacks, and of course, I wanted some too. So I got things fried and baked, and um, um, it's just going well, you know. And we had rented a Men in Black movie, and uh, we <laughs> go in the back watching Men in Black, the twins and I. And um, after laying there for uh, a few moments, one of my boys um, heard the smoke detector, the smoke alarm. And um, by the time I get to the kitchen, there's about a four foot fire um, from the grease that I left on. And um, me being the genius that I am and trained and um, handling fires, <laughs> <laughs> me being highly trained, <laughs> I uh, tucked the, 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 the pan and attempted to go through the back door. And as I went to the back door, I took a step towards um, outside and there's a breeze, a perfect breeze coming through at just the right time. And it catches the fire and it jumps up in my face. And before you know it, I mean, moments later, <clears throat> I'm in the floor covered in grease. There's about an 18% body burn, um, third, second and third degree burns. And, you know, um, we um, just going from such a perfect, and I love to use the word high because I was just, it was just so peaceful and mm. everything is so great and, 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 and going so well. And I'm rolling in the floor, and I'm laying in the floor, and one of my sons, that paid, the one that actually pays attention in school, <laughs> like his mama, but he comes up, and I can remember one crying saying, Daddy, Daddy, you know, you're on fire. I'm like, you figure, you think, you know? <laughs> and the other one comes up and says, Daddy, I remember what they said in school. Stop, drop, and roll. Well... I had already stopped and dropped, and so it wouldn't meant I'm six five, so it wasn't a lot of room to roll. <laughs> so I had to revert that to stop, drop, and pray. <laughs> but moments later, I'm in the back of an uh, of the ambulance, and uh, we're on I twenty, headed down I twenty. You know, an hour or so later, headed to the Augusta Burn Unit, and um, I think that was there. I saw you later that night or the next morning. But you know, isn't it the Christian life how things could be going so well? Mm. And everything's lining up, and the bank account is fine, and all the kids are tucked in fine, and mama's happy, and life couldn't get any better. And then things pop up, and then things happen. And you're never prepared for those things, Chris. I, and I'm speaking for myself because I'm probably at my worst a lot of times when things are going well, mm -hmm. when everything's fine. And I often warn of my congregation and uh, my children, my household, I tell them, I said, you know, just be real cautious when things seem to be going well. Because a lot of times in our faith, it's not the struggle or, or the tough times. Because in tough times, it's easy to pray and to lay prostrate before the Lord. Mm. But when everything's going fine, don't let, don't let your Bible collect dust. Don't cut off the worship music or stop the prayer life when things are... I told you, Chris, it was going to be hard to be to, to, to make it short. But anyway, but don't 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 stop seeking the face of God That's it. when things are going well. Mm. And um, but but through all of this, I'll say this: um, there were six surgeries they had to perform to, to to save the leg. We had some infection issues at one time. We had some because of the medication, some um, possible heart failure, and so a lot happened real fast. Mm -hmm. Looking back at it. In my trial, it seemed like an eternity, Chris. It mm -hmm. seemed like forever. But looking back at it, I'm like, you know, it's just a couple of months. But um, in those months, I want to give a shout out to the Augusta Burn Unit and all the nurses and doctors and surgeons. They did such a great job. But um, in that trial, I'll say this. I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand it. And I like to sit here and tell everybody that um, I was just overwhelmed and I woke up from you know, this surgery or the first surgery or the sixth surgery, just clapping and praising God. I do know this. And um, God told me this. Two things I say, and I shut my big mouth. Um, the w first thing that he told me, and I share it with my wife, is that life would never be the same for me again mm -hmm. um, after that experience. And, and I mean that in the sense of this. It, every moment counts now. Yeah. Every moment. Wow. You know, my wife, my daughter's going off to school or just running to the store there's more hugging, more embracing. Um, um, there's just, you know, even if I forget to hug, it's a quick phone call just to say, hey, love you, you know. And um, it's not paranoia, but it's just that I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah, the moments yeah. more. And the second thing would be this, is that through all of that, even laying on my back, I want to utilize every moment I have now and every opportunity as a platform to share my faith. Mm. 
those nurses, even the surgeons, even the anesthesias, as, as, uh, if I'm saying that right, the guy that stuck me with the medicine, <laughs> they, uh, doc, also known as Dr. Feelgood, <laughs> even with, with, with those people, I shared my faith. Yeah. I would be preaching and fading out, and I'd wake up, and I'd be mumbling and preaching again. So <laughs> life has changed for the better. That's good. Amen. That's good. Well, I, you know, I, I love, I don't love the story because it happened, but I love how you responded through it. And I remember some of those times on the phone, uh, you know, how you, how you were discouraged. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, here's a guy yeah. that's preaching every Sunday, and a lot of times people look at pastors and think they don't, they don't have mm-hmm. the struggles I have. And, well, if you had to work where I work, yeah. you'd have, you know, and uh, I think God sometimes allows some, uh, us to go through some things to relate. Yeah. And uh, I don't think we're oblivious to pain. I think it's, mm. uh, I think it's going to be there. Mm. And uh, God works through us. Uh, mm-hmm. God, God grows us through that. Mm. Uh, I've learned that in the, in the darkest times of my life is when God was growing me. I just Amen. didn't realize it until after the fact, Amen. you know. And so I, I appreciate it. I really do. I appreciate uh, what you did, how you went through it. You got something else? Chris, I'll be the first to tell you that um, I kind of gave the testimony to the other side of the pain and the suffering. But, you know, initially I'd be the first to say, you know, um, don't get it mixed up at all, that I had to wind me attitude for a while. Mm-hmm. I had to wind me attitude. And I'm thinking that Tab and I have given our lives to you for uh-huh. you, God. You know, everything we do, we're pastoring, we're teaching, we're evangelizing from church to church. I had never been busier in ministry. It was every Sunday, two services, and just preaching and taking care of my family and thinking in my way, not being perfect, but living a good life for God. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this to that person out there that's thinking that, you know, that's trying to do everything right, that's trying to dot all the I's and cross the T's, and a trial raises up. You know, if we're not careful, the devil will get in that. And he'll begin to whisper lies in our ears. You know, John 10, 10 says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and That's destroy. It. That's it. And that theft he talks about, I don't think the devil wants to steal my size 15 shoes. Mm. I think he has his own. <laughs> but uh, I'm joking. But, but you know, no. But he wants to steal our joy. Mm. He wants to steal our peace. He wants to disconnect us from our faith and our trust in God. And and so um, I laid there those days after, mm. I mean, one surgery wouldn't work, and I prayed. The next surgery wouldn't work, and I prayed. And then I realized that my prayer wasn't getting through. Maybe my phone was cut off, my phone line, prayer mm. line was cut off. <laughs> so I called some of my buddies, and I was like, okay, mine ain't working. Y'all pray. Mm. And they prayed, and we collectively, we prayed. And, you know, five surgeries later, I'm laying there saying, okay, God, you know. Mm. And now the devil's whispering things to me, and I'm thinking, you know, um, I even begin to think, you know, now I'm a Christian, and I believe in my Bible, it's my life. But even uh, the devil began to whisper, you know, other faiths to me, you know, karma, you know, oh, this is karma. You know, you were nasty in that eighth grade class, you giggled real loud, so it's coming back on you. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm a Christian, we don't believe, I don't believe, and I don't preach karma. Mm. You know, God ain't getting me back for what I've done in the past, I'm forgiven. But... I, I struggled with that, mm-hmm. and to be honest, and I did. Yeah. And uh, but I thank God that when the medicine wore off, I was able to just say, "Thank you, Lord," and mm. count it as a blessing. Well, I just think that's it. I think we have to be honest and say, you know, we're, we don't get through this stuff. We don't ride through it on a cloud. We walk through it in the dirt, just like everybody no. else. And yeah. and I just appreciate the realness of that. So uh, we just wanted to come. We just wanted to share a little time of encouragement. You've heard mm-hmm. Molly's story. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you could be walking your best life. You could be living for the Lord. And, you know, uh, there was a pastor said one time, he said, every day the world rolls over on someone that's sitting at the top of it. And that's kind of what happened in Molly's case, as you see. And, and so you may be listening and think, I hear a scripture like that, I count it all joy. You tell me how in the world I'm supposed to count it all joy when uh, I just found out I've got this, I've got cancer, or I've got this, or somebody died or whatever. How am I supposed to count it all joy? I want you to know there's only one way, and that's through Jesus. That's the relationship with Jesus. And you may have found yourself falling in some trials, but Scripture says count it all joy. Amen. Now, you just heard Molly, and I'll tell you the same thing. Mm. That's the hardest thing you'll ever do. But when you can line yourself to where say, okay, God, I don't understand why I'm giving you glory or counting it all joy. <laughs> when you can figure that out, uh, maybe you need to write the next book. But I'm just telling you that it's, it's one thing that Scripture says and we're supposed to do. Uh, I can't sit here and tell you, okay, here's how you do it. I can tell you <laughs> there are some things that I've learned Usually on the other side of my pain, where if I'd have done it, I've, I could have counted it joy and I, 
I, I, I might have I might have enjoyed the journey a little more. I don't know, but we're sitting on the porch. Mm. Just wanted yeah. to give you a little bit of encouragement. So we're going we're going to pray we're going to pray for you. I ask Molly to pray for you. Mm -hmm. And um, if you watch this and if you're struggling and you need somebody to talk to or pray with, mm -hmm. man, send us a note. Um, send us a you know a, a comment on this page. And we'd love to talk to you. Uh, Molly would be glad to talk with you. Uh, just, just thanks for joining in. So I just want him to pray for us. And uh, thanks for just sitting on the porch with us today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us, all that you're doing for us, God. We thank you for all that you've already done and figured out in our future, God, that we've yet to even see. We appreciate you, Lord. Mm. We're so thankful, God, for... Being able to wake up um, even in just this morning, this day, uh, for the daily bread you provided us with, God, and for our families, for our opportunities to share our faith, for uh, bringing us through the hard times. Yeah. We thank you for um, giving us strength, God, being our strength when we were so weak, God, where we would have quit in our naturalness and our, on our own. I, I would have quit a long time ago, God, but I thank you that when every time I've been weak, you've been our strength. You've been yeah. my strength. Yes. So we love you. We appreciate you. We're thankful, God. We pray now for our world. We pray for our nation. We pray um, um, even more close to home for our state, our cities, our counties, our churches, God. We pray not just for our personal churches with Pleasant Grove and Hall Grove. Mm -hmm. We pray for all the churches in our community, for all the churches in our world, and for your church, our church, your church collectively, Ecclesia, God, your, your body of believers, God. That through all of this, God, that are still holding on. And we thank you, God. And uh, we pray for strength. And even in the world that's full of so many uncertainties right now, God. Please, God, give us strength. Give us strength. We pray for joy, peace, knowledge, and understanding of your word. We just say we love you. We appreciate you. And we thank you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray, God. Amen. 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 Thanks for joining us. Look forward to hearing from you.